Today, I return to Starry Cove Parkour, which, despite the name, is not just about parkour. If you saw the last video, you may be especially confused about what I said there. After all, in the first part of the map, I went through some truly agonizing parkour. But it turns out that I finished up that first episode right where the tone of this map changes completely. The middle part of this map is a lot more puzzle based, and while I'm not sure I'd say it's any easier than the first part, it definitely was different. You'll see what I mean in a bit. But before I continue on, I just want to mention that if you want to play the map yourself, as always you can click the link in the description to download the map. With that out of the way, let's move on to Starry Cove Parkour Part 2. Uh, so you know the way I said that from here it switches from parkour to puzzle? Yeah, I lied. Okay, I didn't lie completely, but I did tell the whole truth. Because just before you get into this village, there is this one little section that involves a couple of jump boost blocks in order to access the village. Really though, you can barely even count this because it is way easier than any of the other parkour sections. When you arrive at the village, the first thing you need to do is find the entrance to the mine. And let me tell you, I was basically a complete joke at this. Like seriously, I was reading way too much into everything. Like I tried all of these individual little areas behind me, trying to see if there's anything inside those chests or in the furnaces, but really that didn't get me anywhere. Uh, then let's try this one. Yep, still nothing. What about the furnaces? Could be something like this furnace, right? <laughs> um, well, it's not those anyway. Like seriously, I thought at one point that even the colours of the beds had something to do with it, but that was all just not true at all. I noticed the bed here is blue, which is kinda interesting because this one's- yeah, that one's green, and then I know this one here is black, yeah. Alright, and now, take a look in here. Oh, there's another blue one. Wait, oh, no, that's the one I was just in. Okay. And now this one is lime green. When it became clear that the entrance to the mine was not in fact behind me there, I checked out this area to see if anything was there, but also there was nothing. It always helps to try out some stuff. It says go to mine, but I'm not really sure what I'm meant to do. Um, so there seems to be a bit more exploration now. Um, oh god, no. Um, let's see what's around here. So, I'm... I don't really know where we're meant to go here. So it says go to mine, but I'm just gonna go up here. Um, so what are our other options? Let's see. And with that, I went to check this tower. I quite literally checked the tower from top to bottom. Now, the top of the tower didn't really have anything at all. Um, okay, so there seems to be a bunch of holes in this building's windows. Yeah, uh, that doesn't seem great. Then when I went into the basement, I found this storage area which had a bunch of chests and barrels, but there was nothing in any of them either. So at that point, it seemed like I hadn't found anything here. Emphasis on seemed. We'll get back to that. So after I tried that tower, I checked out this house, which had nothing. Is there anything to jump around in here? Okay, well you can jump on this. Hmm. No. Oh, this jump does not look fun. But how difficult it is, I am not sure. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother with that. <laughs> and then I checked out this other house, which also appeared to have nothing. It says for sale. Right, so now... God, that was completely unnecessary. We could've just gone on this. When I finished those two buildings, I checked out the area outside them, but once again, there was absolutely nothing. And what this meant is that the entrance to the mine was actually the very last place I found. But that didn't really mean anything because the entrance to the mine was blocked off. It seems this tunnel leads to the mine, and that is where I need to go, but this entrance to the tunnel is closed. Maybe I should find another entrance. Can you guess where the other way in is? Seriously, think about it for a little bit. After moving away from that closed entrance, I could not seem to find the secret way at all. Up in this direction? So, oh god, no, 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 that's not a good idea. Oh god, all those sweet berry bushes. Yeah, we'll 
jump down from there. There's no reason for us to be up there. I'll try to find another way in, but what other ways in are there? I'll also point out that midway through trying to find the secret way in, I fell off this little bridge and had to basically do all the jump boost jumps again. You fell. Only choice is water now. Oh, that's unfortunate. Now I have to do all these jumps again, but that's fine. That's fine. It really wasn't that big of a fail, and it didn't hold me back that much. It was just more really, really annoying because of how stupid it was. Maybe this tower has something going on? Hold on, let's try it again. Hmm. Okay, that can't be opened. That doesn't do anything. This one? No. That one can, but none of these do anything. Ugh. I'm completely lost. Seriously, I tried the most random of places, like all of these water pits, and that didn't get me anywhere. Ooh, hold on. This is a stretch, but what if it's one of these water pits? Right, okay, not there. None there. And come on, I'm not trying all of that. We tried that tower. Uh, we could try that house again, but I don't think it's in there. With pretty much every option exhausted, I had no real choice but to go into spectator mode and see what the answer was. And let me tell you, when I saw the solution, it made me just want to scream. Okay, so... Hmm. Right. But how would you get in here? Yeah, so it turns out that when I searched this basement, I literally walked right past the secret exit. I really got a hand it to the creator on this one. They made it so obvious, yet so cryptic at the exact same time. Wow, how anyone would figure that out is just insane. Okay, uh, so that's how you actually get into the mine, which is a bit ridiculous. How anyone would figure this out on their own, I really do not know how. <laughs> right, and that's on to level 14. Anyway, after you find that secret exit, you move on to the next area. In this hour part, there are a few cool things to see, but they ultimately lead to nothing. I should also point out about this troll water section. Like, just take a look what happens here. Map shortcut, don't press. Why did you come down here? It's a dead end. And that's, I think that's it. You think it would be a shortcut? It's not. Oh well, that's a bit of a troll, but we can keep going. Uh, yeah, so anyway, after coming back up from that part, it was time to move on to the next puzzle, which once again was a maze where you had to find the secret exit. Welcome to Starry Cove My My Okay, I, I need to see that again. I missed what that said. Find the secret exit tunnel. Okay. Hmm. Okay, we're, we, we'll go with, like, left first. I should probably explain what I'm doing here just so you understand my strategy a little bit. Basically what I was doing is I would pretty much always turn left whenever I could. We're gonna be here a while. Occasionally I'd come across something interesting but it never actually led to anything. Danger, folly rocks, no entry. <laughs> you think I care? You really think I care? Hmm. Anything here? I don't think so. I'm gonna keep going. The strategy was still good up to a point because it helped me to review where I'd gone already. What does this lead to? Does this just lead back out to where I was? I... Let's see here. No, that's not the right way. Okay. Ultimately though, it began to get a little less useful and eventually everything just seemed to loop back on itself and I really started to run out of options.
Now that just takes us back out to where we are. Okay. That just leads back to the middle again. See what I was doing wrong because I have no idea. This thing keeps looping back on itself and it's impossible to find your way. Nope, that's not the way either. At this point, I basically tried everything there was to try inside the mine. So I came back out and saw if there was anything else I could do. I tried to see if going up the mountain did anything, but it actually doesn't let you go any higher than about 10 blocks. So that was completely useless. After that didn't work, I had basically no choice but to use spectator mode again. I tried to see if I could get the solution by doing the short spectate and then try to find the exit myself. But I wasn't even able to figure that out. Again, I was kind of dissatisfied because I was really close to getting it. It was all a matter of turning around and seeing that little gap. But let's be real, who's going to see this gap? No one. Because there's not really a time where you're ever going to be going the direction where you'll see the gap. Because at the top of this tunnel is a part where you're meant to jump down. So yeah, once again, incredibly obvious, yet incredibly cryptic at the same time. So, where you go to that bit that has the jump sign, it's behind this. Secret tunnel. Though both of those are way too hard to find. Like, oh my god, they took way too long. So once I got through that secret tunnel, it thrust me right into yet another maze. And I can confidently say that this maze was the worst out of all three. I would actually like some parkour. I know I get really frustrated by parkour, like, almost right away. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't believe that sign. I'm going to do my usual thing with going left. That doesn't... Okay, so that leads to a dead end. Early on, I tried out this little parkour part. Now, the parkour itself wasn't really that difficult. Like, the jumps, as you can see here, are really just, like, two, maybe three block jumps. The problem, though, was I touched the lava. And for some reason, when I was playing this map, I was not regenerating health. And what that meant is when I touched the lava, it set me on fire, and it started to take away my health, and my health was not recovering, and since my health was not recovering, it just kept going down... So even though I had survived the lava, because I wasn't regenerating health, it meant I burned to death. And one thing that really did not help is that if you die here, it actually respawns you all the way back outside the mine. That's actually not that big of a deal though, because you already know how to get back here at this point. So it really only holds you back by about half a minute. I tried a few different ways and I appeared to get further, so I'm going straight on and seeing what's down here. Okay, so this leads up to something. Well, did I actually find find the way out here? But then the map did something that you will just not believe. Like seriously, take a look at what happened right here. Okay. Dead end. You will have to find a different entrance. Crystal lava caves. Oh, that part looks really difficult. After that, it appeared that my only option was to go through the lava parkour. This is going to be painful, not because the jumps are hard, but because if you so much as touch the lava, you are dead. Because you don't regenerate health. I'm not sure if you're not meant to regenerate health or what, but you don't regenerate health. A bit after this section, I came across what right, seemed so... like a dead end. But I actually saw right through it, and I saw there was a little space that you could go to the right. Dead end, or is it? If you follow that part, it takes you to this area, which has this sort of miner's bar. I went into the bar, but I couldn't figure anything out, so I came back out and went back into the main part of the maze. Okay, well this is a cool little bonus area, but it's not what I'm looking for. After that dud, it just got worse and worse. I what way do we go? Okay, that's a dead end. So wasn't that way. Then the next way to go would be here. That's dead end. Let me guess. Are they all going to be dead ends? Ooh, this thing somewhere. I think that just brought us back to where we were. And now this way. I got to this other lava cave where I thought I was progressing because I hit another checkpoint. 
we're on a new section, so I think we've progressed. But it turns out that those two checkpoints are actually completely meaningless. I thought I'd found the exit again, but once more, it was a fake. Oh boy. This probably won't be very fun. Dead end. You will have to find a different entrance. Crystal lava caves. Oh my. This is getting a bit ridiculous. Like... How am I supposed to go the right way here? And from here on, I was once again going around and around in circles, getting absolutely nowhere fast. I'm really just starting to completely lose it here. Like, I am slowly going a little bit insane. I'm really confused here. I feel like I've been going around in circles and not really progressing very much. So at 40 minutes, I'm going to see how you actually get in. There's so many of the passageways loop back on themselves. So like it's impossible to know what's the correct way. I'm not going up there that time because that just brought me to a dead end. Oh, hold on, hold on. Never mind. There are multiple of these. Okay, this brought me to a different one to the last one. But it didn't actually bring me on anywhere. Hmm. Crystal lava caves. I think this is just the dead end though. It's such a troll. Like. How are you supposed to figure out how to get into this? And once again. For the third time out of three. In this episode. I had to go into spectator mode. To find how to get out of here. What's even funnier though, is even when I was in spectator mode, I took over a minute to actually find the solution. It's literally that cryptic. It took me a minute to find the solution in spectator mode. Can you imagine that? After seeing what the solution was, the way I felt was... Oh, I was incredibly impressed. I was incredibly angry. I was bested, there was really nothing I could do, but once again, it felt like something that I should have figured out myself. And, well, when I found it out initially, I felt like doing nothing but ranting about it. So, take a listen to this. Alright. How was anyone supposed to have seen that one? I mean, let's be real, okay? I have no idea how anyone would figure out that on their own. I mean, yeah, there'd probably be a couple, but not that many. God, that is so hidden. So yeah, after finding the exit, I was finally onto the crystal lava caves, which is where the parkour picks back up again. I had already been playing for quite a while at this point, so I decided to call it a day. So what do I think of this map now after those puzzle sections? Well, I gotta say, the break from the parkour was quite nice. I did get pretty frustrated at some parts, but it was a different kind of frustration. It's not like rage, it more kind of feeling like you're completely losing it, like you're going insane. You know, it's a little slower paced, it's less angry, you're more kind of kicking yourself. But also, uh, the creator of this map, Baselin123, Baselin123, I'm still not sure how it's pronounced. You really need to be a little less cryptic with your solutions. The like mind, seriously, some of them are ridiculous. just like impossible. How would like I don't know how anyone would figure out a good few of those on their own. But anyway, that's it for now on Starry Cove Parkour. If you liked it, then click that like button down below. If you want to watch the last map I played, you can click right here. You could also watch me live on Twitch around 6.30, 7pm on Wednesday evenings. And finally, if you really enjoy my content and want to see more, then click the subscribe button and enable notifications. Thanks for watching and have a good night or day.